and welcome to our next MIFI 2 YouTube video. During our last videos, we mainly focused on technical issues around MIFI 2. Uh, we have demonstrated some technical deep dives uh, for you in a video, um, but what we now would like to do is something more on the practical side. So we would like to demonstrate in the next video how MIFI 2 could be implemented in an investment firm. Therefore, we are uh, asking and uh, answering questions around how a MIFI 2 project should be structured, um, what are the main challenges and how to deal with them. So I hope you enjoy it. So welcome to the MIFI 2 at PwC video channel once again. Today we would like to inform you about our activities regarding the subject how to implement MIFID 2 in an investment firm. Since MIFID is a very complex regulation which has lots of strategic impacts and the ability to change established business models, you should generally start the implementation phase of your projects around MIFID 2 in EMEA with a so-called heat map. The heat map facilitates discovering where MIFI2 impacts an investment firm the most. After beginning with the actual implementation work, when it comes to the point where the project team has to be aware of a huge amount of regulations, projects are usually so busy making the investment firm compliant with all these regulations by the end of January 2018, that the strategic impact is likely to fall behind. If you are working for an investment firm, we highly recommend to watch out for strategic impacts on your business model at any stage of your implementation project. But let's get back to the heat map. Here you can see an example of such a heat map containing 18 topics. You need to fill the heat map by determining the impact of MIFID 2 regulation across the business division, for example, wealth management and retail banking investment banking and asset management. We use the traffic light colors red, amber and green to demonstrate where the biggest impacts from the strategic point of view are and where we would like to focus our work during the whole implementation project. Having this heat map, you can consider opportunities to change the business model, to increase revenues or to reduce costs also detect occasions to reassess the legal structure of your organization besides guiding through the implementation of MIFI 2 in a compliant way. In summary, this high-level impact assessment is the starting point of each project which allows you to react efficiently during the implementation of MIFI 2. Next, we would like to give you an overview about a four-step approach for MIFI 2 projects. Afterwards, you will see further details as well as some examples for each step. First of all, you need to start with the onboarding step. The key activities during this step are finalizing the project structure and defining roles and responsibilities, which is a very important, especially for international investment firms. For example, if the firm has a group structure, it requires to define which activities are settled either on the group level or on the local level. You will see recommendation on this on the next slide. The second step is the assessment and strategic positioning, which is a deep technical work. Here you need to perform the implementation from the starting point on looking at what is inside of the regulation. As this regulation is very complex, it makes sense to use a tool support to navigate through the requirement. In workshops, you should ask yourself whether you comply with this regulation or not at the moment. The workshops are performed to determine whether the investment firm complies with certain regulations or not. After or even within these workshops, you need to transfer these regulatory requirements, which are very close to the legal text and the different articles, to business requirements and develop appropriate solution in step 3. These solutions include what you as an individual investment firm need to do in order to be compliant with the regulation. Step 4 is the implementation which is divided in the IT system enhancements and the organizational setup. After identifying these business requirements and solutions, the actual implementation work starts. 
Investment firms need to develop and write so-called technical business solution plans, also referred to as blueprints. These contain the complete trail of legal requirements, identified gaps and corresponding measures. Finally, all steps based on project management services, such as meeting setup, coordination, status tracking and reporting to the steering committee. Generally, there are two different levels on which MIFI 2 has to be implemented, the global level and the local level, if you are an international firm. All four project phases are executed on both levels then. However, it is to be noted that if you are a global player, you should act on both sides, group level and local level. If you are not a global player, you should concentrate only on what concerns the local level. Let's go into details of step one, onboarding. In the onboarding phase, you need to decide on how to structure the overall project. This means to finalize the project structure especially. All high-level project activities need to be identified. Afterwards, there need to be a definition of all project milestones. It is a great help to keep in mind which milestones and in what timetable the project will be able to reach a goal to be compliant with the entire regulation by the 3rd of January 2018. Furthermore, it is helpful to define roles and responsibilities for the project. Normally, we have a project leader, a team structure, sub-project organizations, the whole team and also escalation positions such as project steering committee that communicates and reports to the management board. Finally, project governance should be promoted because it is of high importance since there is a need to have an escalation charter in case of any struggles within the project, for instance. Deliverables for this phase will be an overall project organization chart, the project setup, and the milestone plan. In the second phase, which is called the assessment and strategic positioning, you need to take a very deep look at the regulatory requirements that origin in the MIFID II regulation. Currently, this consists of the level one and level two regulation. Level one is already finalized, while level two is about to be finalized. In October 2016, first parts of drafts of the Level 3 regulation have been published as well. As already mentioned, MIFID is a very huge and detailed regulation since there are several regulations combined. Just to give you an example, we as PwC have invented a tool that helps you and ourselves to get an overview of all these regulations and also to perform the regulatory requirement assessment effectively. Our tool consists on a gap analysis questionnaire, which is very detailed, but there is no way to shorten this complex regulation. By the means of our so-called regulatory navigator tool, project participants are able to get an overview of the regulation as it helps to navigate through regulation and the regulatory requirements analysis. Support the drafting and phasing of guidelines and in implementing them as well, in order to brief these regulatory requirements and to have a complete gap analysis individually performed for an investment firm. It is very helpful to have something similar in place during your implementation project as due to the big volume and complexity of this regulation, you might not be able to produce a proper documentation of your implementation if someone is checking or auditing you during the implementation work maybe compliance for internal audit, or later in 2018 by external auditors or supervisors. As you might know, MIFID II puts into practice the so-called Lamfalusi Act, which means that in the end there will be level 1, 2, 3 and also maybe 4. At this point, level 1 is finalized, while level 2, 3 and 4 are still under development. Until the implementation date of 3rd January 2018, you need to be informed about any changes regarding the MIFI 2 regulation frequently, so there is a need for you to read and analyze any upcoming papers.
In case you have already performed a gap analysis, either by yourself or with an external advisor, you need to identify where the analysis should be revised due to regulatory changes at any point of time in the future. This is another aspect where software solutions such as the regulatory navigator can lower work significantly. At the end of this phase, uh, you should have global guidelines as well as group and local impact assessment that puts you into the position to calculate required financial investments, resources, estimated time to close the regulatory requirement gaps. Keep in mind that the dramatic changes may also influence your global and local target business model. Based on the performed regulatory assessment or gap analysis, you need to develop business requirements from the identified regulatory requirements gap and also a roadmap in order to close these gaps soon. The first step will be to define activities and implementation that need to be executed in the individual business model, processes and IT systems of your investment firm based on the regulatory gap analysis described before. After that, standards for the work stream will be defined that are needed to close or change these regulatory requirements into business requirements. Next, you need to define business requirements to close the regulatory gaps. In practice, this will be performed by writing blueprints or any other kind of detailed technical descriptions in order to transfer the business requirements into IT system requirements. Simply said, the technical blueprints become an IT blueprint which is shared with the project stakeholders. At the end of this phase, you will have a work stream standards, business and IT blueprints, as well as an implementation roadmap to finalize the realization of MIFID II. The first step in our approach is the implementation work regarding IT systems. As I explained, uh, you should start with a regulatory gap analysis, transforming the regulatory gaps into business solutions and develop specific blueprints for your investment firm. The main task after that is to transfer these business solutions into your IT systems. A new IT architecture or new data fields might be necessary, but in general, a description is needed on how to change your IT systems in order to implement the business requirements. At first, you need to check the implementation documentation from a business point of view. And then track and monitor the timelines which should be agreed with your IT department or provider. Most times IT changes cannot be implemented all at once and IT departments have to consider change intervals varying from executions done monthly, quarterly or semi-annually. Therefore, it is very important to develop a timeline for implementing all your business requirements until the implementation period is over in January 2018. It is also necessary to monitor the implementation activities from the business point of view. Our experience has shown that as soon as the IT starts to implement the business requirements, we need to check whether all business activities are completely included in the IT implementation and whether the IT department has fully understood the business changes. After implementation, it is also important to test the uh, IT systems. Please keep in mind that it is essential to develop test cases and a milestone before testing. Even after the road testing and documenting, the entire development should still be monitored. Key deliverers of this phase are proper documentation and meaningful reportings on IT implementation and user acceptance testing. The second part of the implementation work is the organizational setup. After the gap analysis is done, the business solution is defined, business concept and business blueprints are written and the IT systems are changed or implemented as well as tested, all existing description, that is policies and procedures, have to be 
change. Normally, there are group procedures and group policies on a global level. These have to be developed and documented on a group level primarily and transferred into local levels in all legal entities afterwards. Correspondingly, we have policies and procedures on a group and on a local level. Thus, deliverables are group procedures and group policies and also local legal entities procedures and local legal entities policies in this case. This is pure documentation work. As there are many things that need to be documented, we recommend you to start early with the documentation work. Please keep in mind that auditors and supervisors might check your implementation at any time in the future and that their starting point will be these policies and procedures. Besides the organizational setup, you need to consider whether extended PMO activities are necessary. It will be important to take a closer look at the timeline of the implementation of MIFE II. There are only less than 11 months left from now until the 3rd January of 2018. Therefore, we would like to advise you of monitoring your project activities and milestones, plans, as well as reporting to board members, to compliance and sometimes even to regulators and supervisors on a group and on a local level. Always keep an eye on your project budget during the implementation work as the expenses are likely to become very high. In 86 projects we have around EMEA, we experience costs could uh, range from 1 million euro to even more than 500 million euros in the end. So there's a huge amount of money that the investment firms has to spend on implementation of MIFID II. This needs to be controlled and accessed all the time as long as the project is running. We also recommend you to implement a strong regular project steering work, including reporting to different project boards members, especially the steering committee and the management board. All in all, it is necessary to have a proper documentation of all the project work since several internal organizations will regularly demand the project status and progress, e.g. compliance function, internal audit and the management board. Furthermore, external auditors are likely to ask you for information about MIFI II implementation work as well. Therefore, please take care of a proper and complete documentation because each of your stakeholders might ask for assurance whether the implementation of this huge regulation will be completed in time. All these activities should be covered in PMO services. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. As always, please feel free to like and share and do not hesitate to contact us in any case of questions. We also would like to recommend our PwC compliance blog. Also check out our compliance tools homepage and uh, please visit our global MIFI 2 homepage. Thank you. Bye.